to, but there will be a few questions from some of the stuff we've covered in our star review. So there will be a few questions, not nitty, not little fine details, just big idea kind of questions, stuff we've been talking about in class. But there will be a few questions about that. So let's turn back. Let's talk about expanding air. Remember last time we talked about one of our microclimate things, that convection that, that causes our cooling, may it cause that land breeze and the sea breeze in the evening here. But we talked a little bit that you have to have rising and sinking air. But why does that happen? What is the mechanism? And the mechanism has to do with when you heat the air or liquids, they start to speed up. And just like our solids, they start to speed up. They are going to expand. All right? They, they are going to expand. So this video, they're going to talk about the fluid ideas, but basically they are going to talk about the mechanism. This is the mechanism that drives convection, the expanding and the contracting of fluids because it causes them to rise and causes them to sink. And this is the mechanism by which convection works on that. So watch that. are buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. This is called the principle of buoyancy. If the object has the same density as the liquid, it will float in the middle of that liquid. If it is more dense, it will sink to the bottom. If it is less dense, it will rise to the surface. And now, convection. You look nice and warm. Where does the heat for that hot water radiator come from? The furnace, of course. In the basement. Why is the furnace always kept in the basement? Why couldn't it be in the attic for a change? What would happen if it were? Anyone on a floor below would freeze. That's what would happen. Why is this? Well, let's put the furnace back where it belongs so that we can see how a hot water heating system works. The furnace heats the water in a tank. The hot water rises up through these pipes and into the radiators where it cools and then the cold water flows down through these pipes and back into the tank where it is heated up again and so on. But why does hot water go up and cold water go down? Because of the principle of buoyancy. If you hold something that is less dense than water, such as a cork, in the middle of a beaker of water, the buoyant force pushing that cork up will be greater than the force of gravity pulling it down. And as soon as you take your hand away, the cork will rise to the surface. Now when water is heated, its molecules speed up and it expands and becomes less dense. And this less dense water will therefore go up and then cool and become dense again and therefore go down. And that's exactly how hot water heating systems work and why your furnace is in the basement. <coughs> but the house next door hasn't got a hot water heating system. It's heated by means of hot air. <laughs> and yet your neighbor's furnace is also in the basement. Why? Because the principle of buoyancy applies as much to gases as it does to liquids. When air is heated, its molecules speed up and it expands and becomes less dense. And so hot air rises, just as hot water rises. That's how hot air balloons work. When the air inside the balloon is heated up, it expands. And therefore, there's not enough room for all of it inside the balloon. So some of this hot air escapes. The result of this is to leave fewer air molecules in the balloon than before. In other words, the air inside is now less dense than the air outside. So the balloon floats upwards. Just like the cork in the beaker of water. The fact that hot air rises also comes in useful when cooking a hot dog. It'll take forever to get hot if you hold it beneath a fire. But if you hold it just above the hot air which is rising up from the fire, you're in business.
And this is why your neighbor's hot air heating system is able to work on the same principle as your hot water heating system. Hot air goes up, it cools, and the cold air goes down. Since the behavior of gases and liquids is so similar in this and many other respects, and since both gases and liquids flow, scientists refer to both as fluids and to the type of heat transfer which carries or conveys hot fluids upwards and cold fluids downwards as convection. And it's thanks to convection that balloons go up, hot dogs get hot when you hold them over a fire, and one furnace in your basement is enough to heat your whole house. Alright, so write a brief summary for that, please. How many of those videos are there? Let's continue. So, before on this, so expansion, contraction, this is how it works. Now, one little thing I'm going to pass around, you guys got to be gentle to it. This is called a pulse glass. It's made out of glass, I think it has like alcohol or, or water liquid. But it has this liquid that has color in it. And what happens is that you and your share, person you share a table with, you each hold one of these little balls. And whoever has the warmer hand is going, the air inside of it is going to force the liquid to the other side. So if you end up with all the liquid on your side, that means you have the cooler, the colder hand on that. But sometimes you see they, they, you see them on sometimes the little novelties, they'll put them on a pen. It looks low, they'll be like a little ball, a little spiral, a little ball on top. Same idea. But, it's, but we call this a pulse glass. So be careful. It will break. Don't drop it. Don't tug on it. But just, you, one of you holds one, one and one of you holds the other. Just have Jonathan and see which one of you has war, a warmer hand. Whoever has the warmer hand will have an empty, will have a little empty bulb at the end on that. Pass that around. All right, so I guess you pay attention otherwise. Pay attention up here. All right, so we've talked about two ways we get, we get stuff from one place to another. We have conduction, direct contact through the material. We have convection. A fluid takes it, takes it, puts it somewhere else. In both those cases, what, did something have to carry the energy? In conduction and convection, do you need something to carry the energy? Yeah. Yes, you do. Our third way is radiation. This has nothing to do with nuclear energy, nuclear stuff, radioactivity, things like that. Nothing. That's a different definition of radiation. This is light. This is energy transported by electromagnetic waves or light. This is how the sun's energy gets here. Ah. Thank you. Well, you could, but mo that stuff doesn't get to the atmosphere. The only thing that really gets to the atmosphere is visible light. There's a little bit of some other things, but pretty much the only type of light that gets through the atmosphere is visible light, which is that very teeny tiny portion of the spectrum between 700 and 450 nanometers of wavelength. But we have radio waves, infrared waves. In fact, infrared is what we think of heat lamps. A heat lamp would be an infrared lamp. You know, what, we, what most people would call a heat lamp, like when you go to a restaurant and they have the little red lamps, those are infrared lamps. The, the reason they have, and anybody know why they, they look kind of red? Because we can't see infrared, but you know why they look a light heat lamp looks red? Because does the red do anything to heat, heat up the food? No, but the red tells us it's hot. Well, not that it's hot, that it's on. If it was just an infrared lamp, you wouldn't be able to see it. You wouldn't know if it's on or off. So, in, in a infrared lamp that's on, looks the same as the infrared lamp that's off. But if you touch it and it's on, you're going to be unhappy because it's very hot. Same with, with same with ultraviolet lights, black lights. 
Black light is an ultraviolet. has a little bit of purple, so we know it's on or off because we can't see ultraviolet. Things like that. But infrared is what we think of heat lays, heat, things like that. Radio? Can you cook with radio? Microwave. Microwaves. Your microwave oven is radio. In fact, the guy who invented the microwave oven, or they discovered the microwave oven, the, the microwave oven was an accident. No, I, these guys were looking, working with radar. These were guys who were building radar sets during World War II. And the guy had a Hershey's chocolate bar in his pocket. And he goes to pull it out. And the radar had been on and operating. He pulls it out of pocket. The thing had melted. And it's kind of like, well, that's kind of weird. Um, so they started, what caused it? So it's like, what in our lab caused this to melt? And they discovered it was the radar. Now, radar was very low powered compared to the way it is today. You know, about the worst thing that can happen to you back in World War II, like the fire control radar we had the Missouri, about the only way it's going to hurt you is if you got your hand caught in the, in the motor mechanism that made it move around. Because it was like a, it was 13 watts. The fire control radars we have nowadays could cook you. You know, well, literally, you have to turn off all the radar. When we never work on the radar, everything got turned off. You had to turn off everything. Because I know talking to the radio man and the ETs and stuff, when they were working on some of the radio antennas, if they got too close and they, we had circles around them, you do not get close to this, you could actually start feeling like your insides start to get warm from the microwaves. Does the air in microwaves get warm? Probably a little bit, but you don't notice it much because there's a lot more circulation. Um, now, there's apocryphal stories, things like the guys didn't like the seagulls messing up their decks, and they put the fire control on it, and the seagull falls off the mast which probably didn't happen because they get in a lot of trouble for that. Um, there's the story of the guys, you know, there was this cop in Norfolk where the big Navy base, he used to give sailors tickets all the time coming out of the thing. So the guys where their ship was moored, they aimed their fire control radar at the radar gun of the police car, fried it. And I, said, I like that story. I like the idea of that story, you know, if you're just, just an, an, someone just wants to give sailors tickets just because they're sailors. Now, there's no medium required. No medium required here. So, just like we had our little thing here, we will have this one. So, Chris, you are the sun. What? <laughs> Nothing is here. Well, Nicole, you'll face the earth. Stand up. You are the earth. Chris, stand up. You are the sun. Yeah. <laughs> And you are going to, no, you're just going to toss the balls. Toss the balls. Now, notice, remember, just keep tossing them. Remember when we did this with the conduction, you handed it hand to hand. When you did it with convection, someone carried around. Is there anyone carrying it from Chris to Nicole? No, there's no one carrying it. There's, it's 